last time on PFT Live, we gave you an update on the Falcons and Eagles tampering investigation. And here's how this happened. Shefty posted this long article that was only available behind the ESPN Plus paywall with all these little draft nuggets. And buried down near the bottom was a report from Shefty that the Falcons and Eagles tampering investigations could be resolved, could be resolved this week. And then yesterday, he posted, without context or explanation, that the NFL says they won't be resolved this week. Well, this might speak to the dynamic I was alluding to yesterday, that when I'm barking up the wrong tree, somebody tends to say, hey, you're barking up the wrong tree. And it sounds to me like somebody from 345 Park Avenue reached out to Shefty and said, we're not announcing anything this week. Why do you think we're announcing anything this week? We're not. So that's good news for the Falcons and Eagles, because if you're going to lose draft picks, you're not losing them this year. You're losing them at the earliest next year. Yeah, no, that's right. They can plan and, and not worry about that. You know, this weekend, uh, I, you know, I saw the report and I was like, oh, man, Florio is going to be disappointed that something's not going to happen here for draft night. We're going to have care. all that to talk. I don't care. Well, I want the news. Yeah, I, know. Oh, I absolutely yes, want I know. the news. I know. Absolutely. Uh, but but you know hey we'll we'll see where it goes the one the falcon one is the one i'm i'm most interested in there and i think that's the one where i think we all think eh, that could that could go a lot of different ways uh but yeah won't disrupt round 1 that's good and and of course you know i even for the tampering thing and i know i've seen like whoa, uh, like, whoa, could they lose a first-round pick? I, I feel like that's a little aggressive for, for this, right? And I don't want to see the Falcons lose the eighth pick of the draft or anything there. So it's a big well, year for them. they're not going to now. Yeah, and that's, good. Going that, to now. that's my point. That's what I'm, I'm happy about for them. And look, here's what I'm going to be very curious about. Because the Eagles situation, it wasn't even anyone from yeah, the Eagles or right. Saquon Barkley who said anything. It was James Franklin, the Penn State coach, telling a story about how they recruited – Saquon to Philly and talked about the Penn State fans and and Franklin spoke in a way that suggested there were direct communication between the Eagles and Saquon. Right. And everyone connected to it denied it. So it could just be Franklin had bad information. If the Eagles are going to get whacked, it means that someone will have done a very aggressive investigation into phone records and questioning witnesses and digital footprints. And we proved through our investigation that there was communication. And that's what's going to be fascinating to me because, well, we have different standards of how aggressive the investigations were because an, invest of ingress of an, an aggressive investigation of the, of the Falcons could lead to multiple violations. Talking to the head athletic trainer when he shouldn't have been. Well, and more accurately, the head athletic trainer talking to Kirk Cousins when that shouldn't have happened. Ryan Pace, director of player personnel, talking to Cousins when it shouldn't have happened. Possibly a meeting with a head athletic trainer because Cousins – started to say met with and corrected himself. Do you aggressively investigate that? Kyle Pitts recruiting Kirk Cousins. Was he put up to it by the Falcons? Did Raheem Morris know about it? Did Terry Fontenot know about it? The Darnell Mooney thing where Cousins actually participates in the effort yeah, this to is, recruit Mooney. This one's agreed to this the, in a lot of ways. Like, right, how yeah. far do yeah. they go? Right. And will there be transparency? And, and hovering over all of it is Rich McKay is the chair of the competition committee, and he's tight with the league office. Are they going to set that aside? And this is where other teams should be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. What would you be doing to us if we did that? We got, like, if I'm Stephen Ross, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, hey, 345 Park Avenue, I fully expect that there will be a significant punishment informed by what you did to me for supposedly tampering with Sean Payton and Tom Brady. I don't know if they ever admitted to it, but, you know, you got these guys red-handed four different ways because Kirk Cousins wasn't properly prepared to go in there and, and you know, not admit to the world that tampering had happened in four different ways. So how transparent will it be? How aggressive will the investigation be? What will the punishments be? Eagles and Falcons. And for I, now, yeah. they've decided they're kicking the can. They're kicking the can down the road. The, the the Falcons one would, you know, concern me because you you listed it out perfectly. There's some things there that are like, oh, wow. You know, the Eagles, Penn State, you know, that, that one there, yeah, I got to hear more about that, right? That, that could just be a coach hearing something secondhand from the agent, whatever, and he just got his facts wrong, right? But I'll say this. I don't think the Falcons thing is nearly as egregious as Stephen Ross and the Miami Dolphins. Those two guys were under contract with their football teams. Kirk Cousins was a free agent. 
There's a difference there. They were going to finagle, let's get you guys to retire and then come out of retirement and come here and play it and do that. That was the most coup d'etat, up yours, NFL, we'll make our own rules and do what we want type of thing that we've seen. They deserve that. I don't think this is as egregious oh. with that as the Falcons. It's you're. I agree with the context, but they didn't get Peyton or Brady, and they still lost a first round. Pick. Well, it's just and like you say with the Rasheed Rice thing. You got to stop when you're going 120 down. I know you got to stop and put the example down, right? You know? I agree. Yeah, but but in this case, you've got clear violations. I mean, the Chiefs lost a third round pick for talking directly to Jeremy Macklin during the negotiating window when he was in the process of going from the Eagles to the Chiefs in right. 2015. They lost a third round pick in 2016 over that. And, well, okay, you've got head athletic trainer talking to Cousins. You've got Ryan Pace talking to Cousins. You've got Kyle Pitts spending multiple weeks recruiting Cousins. Remember how he denied it when I put out there they were talking about, you know, Jersey, who's going to wear number eight, and all that ended up being 100% true? Why did he deny it? Why did you feel compelled to deny it? Because you know you're doing something that maybe you shouldn't be doing because the Falcons have told you to do it. I don't know if that's the answer, but you'd investigate that. And this idea that he actually participated, Cousins participated in trying to convince Darnell Mooney during the negotiating window to go from the Bears to the Falcons. How aggressively are you going to explore this? Because I feel like the Falcons' attitude, especially because they didn't even bother to tell Cousins what he probably shouldn't say at his introductory press conference, they just they just didn't care. It's like, we don't care. We're just going to do it. And they got their guy. At the end of the day, whatever they lose— their response is going to be, doesn't matter, we got our guy. Yeah. And, and Chris, yeah. the other thing I haven't talked yeah. about, we don't know how much they did to communicate with people about the Achilles tendon. Yeah, that was right. how this first all came up in my head. Right. How did they get comfortable enough to give this guy $100 million guaranteed when they're not allowed to gather any medical information? Surely they have. That's another area where they may have committed a violation that Cousins didn't blurt out. During his introduction, you mean that video on the tennis court didn't soothe all their concerns of him throwing the football? You you mean that didn't do it? That wasn't enough that he was out on the tennis court through some 10 yard passes? <laughs> I think they did a little more homework than that. <laughs> I think, I think so they too. did. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.